Sarah Ann, we do not feel sorry for you, sis. Hi friends, I'm Aura. If this is your first time seeing my face, or even if it isn't and you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also like the video. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers and I'm trying to get on as many home pages as possible so that we can continue to grow the fam. So today we're talking Love is Blind, Season 6, Episode 11. And we open back up right at the lake party. Sarah Ann walks in and Laura is not here for it. But I did think it was interesting how Sarah Ann walked in and was just like, hey y'all, hey y'all, like... We don't want you here. Chelsea and Trevor go off and have a little a little bit of a talk. And I want to say this. Is it me or does Trevor have bad hygiene? Because what was that white stuff in the corners of his mouth as he was talking? The psoriasis is still popping off. Might need to go get that checked out. It was very distracting. But anyway, he cut the mullet off. I thought that was interesting. I guess once he realized that him and um, Chelsea weren't going to be a thing, he was letting me cut my hair and get rid of you that way. But he got straight to the point and was like, I don't understand why you made the, the decision that you made. He asked her if the order was different. If I came in first and proposed, would you have had a different response? She lies and says no. She claims that she would have still chosen Jimmy, which, whatever, at this point, whatever, girl. Whatever happens with y'all, happens with y'all. I felt like they kind of had a similar conversation that Jimmy and Jess had. It was civil, just kind of, I guess, a closure, a, a nice little closure meeting. Jimmy comes over and like kisses Chelsea while they're talking. And I kind of, I don't like when people do that. Like, it makes it seem like you think that I want your dude or like he wants your girl. At one point he did, but we're all in an open space together with everybody watching. I don't think he would try anything. Unless, you know, that's your insecurity coming out. Um, but he, um, Trevor makes a joke and he was like, kiss me on my cheek too. I guess that's like a bromance thing, whatever. Moving on. Laura and Jeremy have a talk. Oh, wait. Sorry. Before that. Chelsea and Jimmy, you know, they can't seem to like not have some sort of disagreement every single day. Chelsea looked over and she saw, um, Jer not Jeremy, all these J names, Johnny and Amy, like being affectionate towards each other. And she was like, oh my gosh, look at the number one couple. And Jimmy got upset about that. I was like, huh? That was so weird to me. But then it, I also thought in my head, like, maybe they are a match made in heaven because he's starting to let his, like, his little Chelsea come out. He was acting just like her in that moment, and I was so annoyed and just done. It was so stupid to me. So Laura and Jeremy talk. What I noticed initially, she didn't even want to sit down to talk to him. Like, she already had it planned out. This is going to be short, not so sweet, and we're just going to be done. Capiche. It kind of went from like 15 to 100. I can't say zero because it started off rocky. It went from 15 to 100 real quick because Jeremy couldn't, he didn't really take ownership of anything. And Laura was just over it, done. I don't think she wanted to hear him talk anymore. So she pretty much she asked him out. She told him I'll be um, over to go get my stuff um, within a day or so. And he was like, oh, I already packed it up. Um, don't touch my stuff. Excuse me. Do not touch any of my stuff. How dare you? So 
AD and Sarah Ann sit down and talk and in my opinion I feel like this was a discussion that didn't need to be had between the two of them. I didn't really feel like it was any of AD's business. Um, I don't think that she was wrong in anything that she said. Everything she said was absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. I agree with everything she said. But I don't think that she should have been the one to have that conversation with her. I think maybe... It would have been better if Laura would have had that conversation with her. But the fact that Laura didn't talk to her at all, good for you, sis. Because who is she anyway to you? Pay or dust. Pay or dust. But it was a little bit heated from the start. Their conversation, AD and um, Sarah Ann. I mean, AD was, she was trying to get out a question, but Sarah Ann cut her off. Because you know you're guilty. You know you're guilty. You sent a DM to an engaged man. He didn't choose you. He didn't choose you. When he said to you in the pods that he was going in a different direction, that should have been the end of y'all's communication right there. Because if you had some dignity and respect about yourself, you wouldn't even want to talk to him anymore. Because he doesn't want you. You can go off out into the world and find somebody else for you that is for you but any an, an engaged man not for you it's not for you so she didn't take any accountability for what she did either she didn't think that she was wrong in what she did and honestly if they had to do it all over again I'm pretty sure she would have done it again um, she didn't care she just didn't care and I guess the producers were trying to get AD to check her, but she didn't. She didn't care. And um, it ended basically with AD walking off because the conversation had gotten to a point where it just wasn't civil anymore. And she was just like, you know what? Forget it. Forget it. So Sarah Ann walks off and uh, goes to talk to Jeremy. And here come her crocodile tears. She's saying she doesn't have to explain herself to anybody. People should be worried about their own relationships. Well, if that's the case, you should have just kept to yourself because you got in the middle of someone else's relationship, didn't you? The tears aren't working. We don't feel bad for you. We're not on your side whatsoever. What you did was wrong. And guess what? How you get them is how you lose them. So you might want to watch your back while y'all go off into the sunset. These two went off and rode jet skis together. And I was like, you know what? Cool. Because we're tired of seeing the both of you. Just go off and do y'all's thing. Goodbye. Meanwhile, Laura's off to the side in her confessional crying. Crying her eyes out about the whole situation. And they're in the background on jet skis. Messy. Just messy. So... We move on to another scene with Jimmy and Chelsea, and they're making an ice sculpture. All I could think of watching this scene is the two of yous, the two of you, are just fake. Fake, fake, fake. This relationship is not going to work. I'm actually sick of seeing y'all on my TV screen at this point. And that ice sculpture y'all made, ugly. It was ugly. I didn't like it. Clay and AD, they went to go paint some sneakers and I had so much anxiety because the way my luck is set up, I'm clumsy and I would have messed that all up. But I did have a vision in my mind of like what I would want painted on some Air Forces and I would make it like really floral, like have some nice little floral, um, like a nice floral design going all along the sides. Ugh, but I would have messed that up. So, but... It looked like they had a really nice time with each other. It was a cute little date. And um, it was kind of refreshing to hear them talk about something other than the fact that he was going to let her down and cheat on her and his dad was a cheater. Amy and Johnny, they are talking about their wedding planning and they bring up the birth control again. And Amy had the nerve to say that it was something that they talked about 
like briefly, that's the only real thing that y'all talked about is birth control. And y'all beat that into the ground. Either get some pills, get the shot, and be done with it. And um, they have this part where in his confessional, Johnny's talking about the process of getting a vasectomy. He didn't know it all entailed. You should be able to tell just from the name vasectomy alone. That name sounds scary. That there's a lot to be, you know, to be done down there with your parts. But I did think it was funny that, excuse me, in his confessional, the dog was knocked out on that couch. Did y'all see that dog? Knocked out on the couch. Hilarious. So now we get to the, the tux and the dress shopping. I'm not going to talk too much about the tux shopping because I don't really care about the tuxes. I'm sorry. I think it's just because I'm a woman and I like women's fashion. Tuxes are boring to me. I don't feel like there's any sort of like versatility when it comes to a tux. Like you either get it a certain color, you wear a certain type of shirt underneath, and some dress shoes. And that's it. It's just kind of boring. But the wedding dress shopping was cute. It was cool to see everyone's family members. Um, AD's niece was so cute. But at one point she was like, do you got some games on your phone? She was bored. Sis, sis was bored. Little sis was bored. But all this crying and just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because I can't relate. But all that crying, it just felt so unnecessary to me. I don't feel like I'll be the type to cry when I go wedding dress shopping. I don't feel like I'll cry. But that's just me saying that now. I can't relate. I don't, I'm not in like a relationship like that. So, I mean, I can't really relate. But all the crying was working my nerves. I was like, get them off my screen now. Ew, yuck enough but I thought that Chelsea's dress was very pretty I love the sparkles and it looked really nice on her the second dress that AD tried on perfect her dress was very simple but I think that that's just her style her style is very simple and just very clean and chic so I thought that, that fit her very well and I love that the veil had till do, death do its part on the bottom of it too bad that's not gonna be the case for y'all but that was a nice little touch because her dress was so simple. That was like a nice pop of, you know, something. It was a nice pop of something to her dress. And Amy's dress was just blah to me, as well as the crown. I could have done without the crown, actually. Yeah, boring. Clay and AD have a really cute little date night. She looked so nice to me. It was just nice. They didn't really talk about much. I felt like, I feel like in past seasons when they go on dates and stuff, they, the couples tend to have more to talk about, but these two just don't have much to talk about, it seems like. I mean, I said it either in my last video or the video before last on Love is Blind that I don't see the chemistry with these two anymore. So I don't know, I don't know what we're doing at this point. I don't know what's, what's going on with these two. Um... Amy and Johnny have a little bonfire, cute little bonfire, something very up their alley. Um, they're, you know, just being cute, affectionate. The chemistry's there, obviously. Nothing crazy happened here. It was just, you know, typical, boring Amy and Johnny. But Chelsea and Jimmy go on an amusement park date, and I guess Love is Blind rented out the amusement park because there was no one there except for the workers. And you hardly saw the workers. The whole point of an amusement park, I feel like, is a bunch of people being there. I don't, I wouldn't find it fun to go on a date with someone and they rent out the amusement park. That just seems so boring. And it's kind of scary, too. Because I feel like, doesn't it look like a set of a scary movie? When there's just no one there and it's just an amusement park? Amusement parks are fun they're lively that just didn't it didn't look fun to me and I'm not just saying that because these two get on my nerves it just looked boring and like no man's land and 
when they were on those roller coasters, Chelsea did not look like she was having a good time. She said roller coasters are her thing. Didn't look like it. Didn't look like it. See, me, I would have been waiting for you with your stuff at the bottom. I don't do roller coasters. Never have. Never will. I wish I was the type of person that liked roller coasters, but no. They don't do it for me. I don't find anything fun about the zero gravity feeling in my stomach. Nothing fun about that. It feels like I'm plummeting to my death. I don't like it. It's not fun. But shout out to the thrill seekers. Y'all go off. At the end, they had like a little date. I think it was like a little charcuterie situation. And um, Jimmy asked Chelsea, you know, how are you feeling about your decision on this, like on the wedding day? Do you think you're going to say yes? Blah, blah, blah. And Netflix decided to end it dramatically there. Like, as if she's going to say, I'm I'm thinking about saying no. As desperate as Chelsea is, we already know what her answer is going to be. Y'all could have spared us this ending. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think the cliffhanger was necessary. We know what she's going to say. We know. But I would love to know what y'all thought about this episode. So leave me some comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel on the road to 1,000 subscribers. And I know I can get there with y'all's help. So don't forget to do those things for me, please. And I will see y'all in my next one. Bye.